Good morning, this is Michael from NCY Story. You can see we got this clamped down and I guess the camera cut off. I apologize if you guys didn't get a chance to see it, but all I did was I used this big plier to it and I just kind of crimp the tips of it here and the other side. And you want to make sure that this does get locked, you'll hear a snap. You can see that you want to make sure this part right here gets snapped in and the other side here gets snapped in. And this one right here is in the front. So these things are already snapped in and we realized we don't actually need to use our zip tie at all because they're pretty solid already. So you can see I got a little bit of insulator in there just to help hold hold the wires in there. But it's got ways in deep in there. What I like about this is it's actually very clear. You can actually see uh, where the wires are going to. Well, supposedly, because black wire is going to the green wire, the red wire is going all the way, it's gonna pass the junction. There's an insulator here that prevents that green wire from making short onto the black wire top. You can I see the Kipsa insulator, which is pretty smart. It uses the own, its own insulator to actually split the wires off so you don't have to have them use like what we had before was the two clamps, so we didn't have to worry about it. And I just want to make sure it is sealed. I'll do it again just to make double check. So you do just give it a good press on this. There we go. And if you don't hear it snip anymore, that means it's already been locked down. I'll do it on the other side as well. Let's see if I can get that clamp on the other side. There we go. There we go. See, it won't let you snap anymore. So that's it. And we're going to check for continuity to make sure we actually got the wires running and tapped in correctly because we're going to be installing back our front cover here. It seems like our heat cover is actually nice and uh, you can't tell because of the sunlight reflection. But you can see here our adhesive. Let's go and check that out. This is pretty much let set for 24 hours to rest or cured or whatever it does. I don't think there's really much curing really. It's just a solid piece of, but it's so far so good. There we go. It's stiff right now because it's super cold, but uh, I think it should be, it should hold up. We shouldn't have any problems, so we can comfortably mount this guy in there. That way we can hook onto this one. So hopefully no no one gets. I'm surprised no one actually yanked this off and breaking this by now because it's such. The only thing that's holding again is these two little nozzles. So hopefully we'll get this cover cover back on. Put his little flap back on as well. I think I have somewhere here. There we go. And then we'll get started on doing the ankle binder. And then we'll work on the battery terminal too. We'll probably get a, get a new tip on that. I already got the tips that I think I might want to use. These ones right here. <clears throat> so we'll probably get to replace those with this, these nice ones. I think they are the, the ones that you actually fill in with solder. Uh, because the reason why is there's no split in them. Meaning if there was a split, I'm sure pay, APM will probably agree with me on this one. Uh, but then you can crimp them because there's no really split on this one right here. See? But however, there is a little drain hole, which I'm kind of worried about. So if you fill it with solder, I guess heat will always rise or tracks. So if it doesn't get hot in the open air, it's not going to actually come out, I believe. But we'll see. But there is no split in, split in these things. So I guess you do have to fill it with solder. There, you could probably crimp them too, I guess. I don't know. But um, more than likely, it's probably soldering. So these guys, this one's a little too big. So what I did was I used the one that has a smaller hole because I just don't want any slack rubbing against the bolt, the terminal bolt. And this one actually fit the terminal bolt just right. They're a little smaller compared to these bigger ones here. You can see the difference here. See, they can almost swallow them in. If I lay them inside like this, you can see how much more of a smaller diameter hole. I like things to be a, be a tight fit and secure fit. I don't want it to be wobbling in there, even though it's gonna be bolted on and probably hold it in place. But I just don't like the idea of having it wobble on. So <clears throat> what I'll do is get a propane torch or something like that, a portable one, and see if I can heat some solder in there. And then I'm going to do what APM did on this video. Just kind of slide the wires in there and hopefully it just forever stay there. So <clears throat> looking forward to trying that attempt. Um, and then we got here, these are the fuse line here. And you want to get a 15 amp glow in the dark one. You know, this unfortunately is the 10 amp, so I'm going to go ahead and Get that exchange out for a 15 amp one. Do you guys want to use a 15 amp one? Because that's what the original stock one is. And it should fit very snugly into this little see through um, fuse holder there. Same as the other one that we had. Uh, the cover's on here. Let me pull this cover out. Same as we had for our uh, Nautilus horn here. It has a fuse built in here. So we're going to replace this guy out. I think we're going to have to cut him somewhere right here. And then maybe do that solderless tip connection thing where we burn it and the solder melts in with the tube of the heat shrink. 
And then more than likely, we probably won't join them two like this together. We'll probably have two separate terminals, just like APM uh, showed in his. He went to two separate. I believe this one right here might be a wire, either if it's not going to the stator, or I mean our uh, starter motor. It's probably going somewhere to our charging system, perhaps, to our stator or something like that. So we can test the continuity in that one, see where it, where that one goes to. But before we can test the continuity, we got to break it first off of this clean line here. <clears throat> Um, so we can actually make sure that they're apart or else the continuity will check the same as on the bigger wire So we have to break the con we have to break the line here or just snap it out or we can just take it from here take it from the fuse port Make sure the fuse aren't joined together and that way we can test from this continuity in here Just this single line that's broken for sorry this continuity line here. That's broken To the one all the way to wherever it's supposed to go. We're thinking probably the same continuity is going to the positive wire here on the rectifier that we'll see. So we have to break this fuse line, just take one of the fuse ends out, keep it open. That way it's not connected to the big, big uh, positive terminal. And then we can find out exactly where this line is actually tracing to. Uh, but in the meantime, let's go ahead and get started on the other ones. Let me put this in here. I'm going to use this as an example. So let me put this fuse thing back in here. There should be two of these. These things are pretty cool. They they only glow actually when they're <laughs> when they're broken, which is fine with me. You know, probably don't want things to glow underneath your wire work too long. So yeah, they only I guess they glow only when it pops. Smart fuse, just like those inflated uh, what do you call that flywheel things where you no know, your tires are low, it starts flashing red or something like that. I can't remember exactly. I haven't used one of those before. I think they're just really for aesthetic, but I think they're pretty useful, I guess, if you're really concerned about your tire pressure daily and you don't want to have to keep on gauging it. Uh, those little light-up things might do you pretty well, so we'll put that back in there. Oh, we're also going to forgot, almost forgot. We're going to go ahead and electric uh, tape all the wires before we even put the front panel properly. So like that little piece, bit piece there. Anything that we can get our hands on that looks ugly, like even this right here, we're going to change it with some Super 33 Plus M3 or 3M uh, good electrical tape. This again was re recommended by APM, so I'm going to check that one out too. So a lot of good, good tips. You guys should check out his channel. Um, he has about 27 years of uh, wiring and electrical experience. I mean, you can't really beat that for the knowledge he's going to share with you. So let me go and get a chair real quick. Okay, I can sit comfortably. All right, so what we're going to do here is we're going to test continuity. And I'm going to go ahead and get my meter. Also, this is the filter here. Also, we're probably going to put a little Y shape on this one. I know i got a lot of things going on here. But I'm excited. Uh, we might split it off. Who knows what we're going to do. Uh, we might. We got to definitely fix this with a little smaller um, uh, zip tie. Because that way I could see spaticles coming out from the crankcase ventilation. Surprisingly, it never came out this one. Even though this one doesn't really have... Other than that little, uh, you know, thing, but I guess it works really well. Like I said, it only has this kind of clamp in there, and it still held up pretty well. The vent ventilation thing here. Let me just take this off for a second. It's kind of hard to explain things with this still roaming around in here. Okay, so you can see here, it has never ever spatical, meaning like little spats of crankcase ventilation, and it's so near the point. I guess this little thing, even though it's it's not really holding it, but I guess this little bump part, it's held it on strong enough. Where it doesn't really come out this way unless it just shoots forward anyway and then it climbs up it does make it waves climb a lot of it because it's such a high compression engine so we're probably going to put a little small tie strap here just like we did for our fuel line which never leaked again uh, thanks to those little small tie strap i'm not sure a particular brand or anything but i just got some regular uh, small tie strap and put on there so we're probably going to put this canon breather filter it might go a certain way so we'll see what we can do i mean maybe we can if we can join these two together and have it kind of fill in here just in case to catch any uh, thing. I think it goes, there's a certain direction it goes to. So, fortunately, oh, here it goes, our flow. You see it? Light indicator right here in the back. Sorry, let's see. See there, it says flow. So it's flowing out this way. We can probably catch it. Um, well, let's see well, how we're gonna do this. We might even modify it and bring it right back into our k filter, maybe. I'm not sure about the k filter, but for sure we'll probably put in a unit filter. If we need to, we can make that happen. Uh, all right, so there we go. I'll leave this guy in here. And let's go and get started. What we're planning to do 
is to check for continuity. All right, nice and brisk out here. See there's still a little frost in the grass, a little ice in the windshield. But I'm not complaining, you know, I, I'm pretty warm and cozy in here. All right, so there we go. Okay, how we check for continuity is we, we just want to put our thing to beep in ohms. And let me show you guys how to do that right now. It's not that complicated, really. All right, as soon as this thing stopped being a bobblehead, I'm not sure, oh, you know why it's being a bobblehead? Because I haven't really screwed it in. So let me tighten this up. You can't see what I'm doing, but I'm tightening the base of it where it stands on. All right, so this is going to be near me holding in my pocket really much. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna test for continuity. And we're gonna see. So what you wanna do is you wanna set your meter to ohms. And then there's a little, probably a little push button or something like I have. You wanna make a beeping noise. One more, there it goes. That's a little indicator of audio right there. That's all you want. It's open load right now. But you can test it out as soon as these leads touch together. This should be a short. See there? And that's what you want. Now, these two should not beep, okay? Because uh, there should be no connection between the, these two lines if we did it correctly. So let's go and put one in here. Either one, doesn't matter which polarity. We're just testing for continuity, so it doesn't matter polarity. You don't have to match black with black or anything. So, hmm. Might have a little trouble here. It has some resistance in the wire, but... I'm not hearing it beep, so that's a good thing. Okay, so we're gonna leave we're gonna leave the black probe in here. Okay, and then we're gonna go up. And we're gonna test the black. I guess not is it the black? Uh, I can't remember. Or the green, sorry. The black on our wire here is actually indicating ground. So what we're gonna do now is we are going to test it out on the green wire. So we, we're getting our black wire here. Let's get, move our red wire out of the way. I'm going for the black wire and I'm going to test the green real quick. It should have continuity. You hear, you hear the sound? Okay. There you go. Okay, now if I move this and I touch the black wire here, which is our positive wire on our harness, it shouldn't make a sound because that, that means we didn't do the connection here properly. So here we go. I don't hear anything. You see some resistance, but you don't hear anything, which is fine. Actually, no, it's all, yeah. I don't hear anything. You will see some resistance, but you don't hear anything, right? That means there's no continuity there, excellent. Okay, so now we're gonna swamp it. We're gonna also make sure we have a good connection to our, our positive wire, which is our black wire in the harness but our red wire here. This is the correct color code. You know, red should be always positive, but, you know. Okay, so I got this probe in, sort of. Here you go, let me hold it for you. I'll hold these two so you can see the open ends, too. Okay, so I'm gonna go and probe the red one. Don't need you, I'm gonna probe the red one. You can probe it like that, okay? Now I'm gonna go and probe the one in the black here from our wire harness, not the green one. You guys can hear the sound, right? Great. And then if I put the green one, nothing. Excellent. So we do have good continuity on both these wires. They're going to the correct path that we thought they were going to go. So it's good. It's done right. And the connection, I think, looks pretty more solid than the other one. And you don't have to worry about any extra tie strap. Yeah, you can pick these guys up. I believe Amazon sells them. So, yeah, you can definitely uh, just get those. If you had this kind of you know, smaller projects like this to tap it into, I think they work excellent. So let's go and get some electrical tape and fix some of these old electrical wiring work. It's right now it's really chilly. Uh, I really don't want to do it because I don't know, maybe it gets too cold, the constipation, maybe the wetness might go onto the tape. You always want to do adhesive when it's actually, anything adhesive when it's actually room temperature or warmer. So let's go ahead and debate on that one. Let's go ahead and just hold off on doing the tape part and mounting them. Let's skip to it and let's do the fun stuff. Let's get our ankle biter in there. I might even guys show you how to change the clutch springs at the same time since I'm taking it off. So let's get this guy rolling. 
Let's see here. Let me go and put this guy. I, I just put this temporarily here just to hold it. I think it should be fine. Just it's not really supposed to be that way. It's eventually going to turn around, of course. But as far as we know. So I'll wait till it gets room temperature warmer or something like that. And then we'll bring it out there into the open sunlight. And then put apply the heat because you don't want to really apply when it's just freezing cold. It would work too if you know worst case circumstances are, but it's better to be room temperature or warmer. Room temperature meaning not the room if it's your freezing cold. Uh, room temperature, like say you're in the <laughs> little warmer climate. All right. Okay, let's look at this guy. Siding. Let's put this here so it won't break somewhere. All right, so there we go. This is the case brace. And then we also have, we're gonna reinstall our clutch. So this is it, we're looking at the CVT setup here. We got the case brace. Now the case brace I'm probably not gonna put on because I have two dual shocks anyway and it's kinda, I have to remove the shocks and everything uh, to get to everything back support at the engine. But you can see pretty much how it's gonna face Pretty much you gotta loop it like this. Yeah, there we go. Let's see if I can put this temporary so you guys can see how it's gonna station like. Alright, so yeah, you'll have to remove quite a few things right here, your power starter motor. That way it can mount behind the scene. And then you gotta you got remove the shock area bolt here. Gotta okay, clamp the shock back onto that little hold area right there. See that? So there's a few things here, but if you do use this, you might not have to use the ultimate uh, ankle biter back brace because this will be your back brace array for your case brace. But I think it'd be a little too much overkill. Probably be a good job to, to paint a little bit. It looks raw metal. I mean, it looks like Mad Max a little bit. You, you think Mad Max on the case brace? <laughs> so that's the case brace for you. All right, so let's go and get the bolts. For these guys, uh, since we're only dealing with ankle biter, um, these are the only bolts that come with the ankle biter. Let's see if I, if I slide them in here or slide them in there. I realized I put the anchor right in my pocket here. So this is the one that actually keeps dropping. It has a little bit of weight on it, not much, you know, maybe less than a quarter pound or something like that. but. I put them in here in my pocket here while I hold the camera near my chest area. And it looks like it gives me about maybe two feet of uh, wires, two feet of um, power cord, micro USB cord, so it works out. I'm not dropping anymore as I, I'm often doing. So let me go ahead and find that. Okay, where are you? Always when you need them, you can't find them. Oh, let's go and get the basic stuff we also need. Our clutch springs here. I'm going to show you how to change the clutch springs. And then we're going to also get some roller weights. Here's our roller weight. 12 gram. We'll put these in right away. That way we want to just say, you know what? It worked great. Good recommendation by uh, uh, David, Tata expert there. So we'll put that in there. We'll put this in there. We'll see. And let's go and find those screw packs. Where are they? Oh yeah, the oil, we gotta look into that too as well. And HID bulb conversion, I will probably look into that too before we put the front cover. So we gotta do quite a few things before we actually put the, the actual front cover in there. But it's probably somewhere here. I see bolts, oh there it is. All right, so the case brace, this is pretty much you have for your case brace bolt setup right here. Not quite a bit much, so these are it. They're all Allen bolts too, which is kind of cool. So there it is, this is your case brace bolt. And then these are your uh, ultimate ankle biter bolts. You're gonna get 10 of them with 10 washers. There's gonna, they're M6, all of them. And they're, I believe it's M6 by 90. You get two of them and you get M6 by 65, you get one of them. And then you get like, I think the total is six M6 by 60. So you got six M6 by 60, one M6 by 65 and then two M6 by 90. 90 or 95, I can't remember exactly. All right, so here we go. We're gonna go and get ready to prep this up and then for insulation. I'll probably even bring this whole kit with us. We'll definitely need our M6 here. This is basically what you need for installing your ankle biter. You're gonna need M6. 
uh, I'm sorry, H6 hex, or Allen, you could say. Okay, you're gonna need the driver for it, of course. I would recommend getting an extension, which we find that so useful in a lot of areas. You're gonna need a smaller driver. These, well, depending on what your Allen socket takes, but only takes a smaller one, so we'll keep it the smaller one. So this is pretty much it. These are the tools you need, some Allen, an extension, and this one right here to solder it in. And you're gonna need a little bit of uh, blue Loctite to prepare everything to go in. And you're gonna to need to also, I believe, we're gonna take out our, yeah, we're gonna take out all stuff, stuff so we're gonna need some more tools. So let's bring this whole thing in here because we need to take out our clutch and variator and everything else to drive it. So I think we got this guy in here, so we'll just leave him in here. We should be fine. Let's bring this whole setup here. And make sure we get a blue Loctite from this side right here. We're gonna either need them those pliers to pull out those C-clamps that's holding our, um, pretty much our clutch springs. So that'll be fun. We already changed it to 1500 RPM clutch springs. I was gonna test it out, but I'm figuring let's just do it what uh, David, uh, Tata Expert says. So we'll just, just keep it all there at 1000 RPM clutch springs because I don't feel like going back and forth on it right now. So I want to see, once I put blue lock tie, I want to just keep it on there. And we are going to get some washers. We're going to get some black washers. Because when we put them back, I think they'll look so cool with some black washers. We'll maybe even keep the silver one on there, but we'll see. So I believe this will probably be the perfect two size for it. Unfortunately, we don't have silver ones, so yeah, black ones would be the only choice we have. So let's go ahead and get these guys. I'm not sure about using Nolan washers. I'm not sure they're heat treated probably good for bolting things else on maybe that's not exposed to the heat so much but since ours is we have to caution it so let's go and put these guys here get ready for that not sure what I need the pliers for now so we're good on the plier part okay so we're gonna take this screw bucket here we got our screw packs make sure we got everything we need Okay, so let's do this. Did we bring our, yeah, I think we did bring our clutch springs, right? So we should be good there. With the impact socket to drive it. So let's go and get back our impact. And we, you do want to torque these to about 35 foot pounds. Uh, when you're about to re-torque them back, you're gonna need a, a little field gauge to hold it. So let's go get our impact. Uh, I believe this. There's our impact here. Works should work beautifully. All right, here we go. Uh, we got to take this case brace back off. Unfortunate, it looks like Mad Max. <laughs> Not too pretty, but it definitely will serve a purpose though. Um, if you're gonna go this route, you have one shocks, a case brace will do you really well. Uh, but if you have two shocks, you might be okay. Your, your engine's not gonna go in half unless you're using it for drag racing. And even then, even the case brace, you have the chances of still breaking your uh, case. And they also have something to make sure you don't get the wobbly effect from your variator. Um, I just didn't like the style of it. Some people might. It seems like a little, you know, look like a, what it goes, those Japanese uh, sunlight animation from E Honda or something like that. I just didn't like the spiral fatty star. If they come up with a cooler design, I might go for it. But just my own preference, so a lot of people might think it's awesome the way it is. So we'll keep these little screw bolts here in place. Uh, in the meantime, let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna take back off the temporary case brace. Let me hold it upright so you can actually see when it's actually really put on there, how it's gonna look. So it's gonna be somewhere in this vicinity right here, like this. Put up. Give you a full view here how the gay sprays and then it's gonna go in more of course a lot in more it's gonna have to get to the other side and bolt on to your sort of your swing arm bolt area see that little one hole there past the starter motor the lower bottom yeah it's gonna go into that little swing arm area it's gonna require you to take off your shocks here so you can mount it on this guy here and you're gonna have to stretch it out a little bit because your shocks will clamp down and hopefully this has enough space for you guys to, or does it? I'm not even sure it would require, no, it probably doesn't. Uh, because it looks like it's gonna 
bail out because it's going to hit this guy right here, right? So there's no need to actually remove the shocks. It just has that hole there. It looks like it's supposed to go through it, but it's not. It's going to hit that little, the end of your variator or your uh, CVT uh, right hand, I say, right hand crankcase. So you don't have to remove your shock, but it's going to press up in there anyway. And then you're going to, you know, very much remove some of your, of course, all your CVT cover bolts here, all 10. This is a long case, so it's going to have 10 bolts. Uh, 10, maybe possibly, I think 11 with the uh, thing. Also, we're going to try to see if we can install back our, our little um, kickstand, center kickstand plate, because I believe we want to be able to put it back here. It's going to come out a little bit like this on the ankle biter. So hopefully we can put it back on and see if it has the, has the support for this little round guy here to hit it so it doesn't actually you know, interfere with our belt. So in the meantime, let's go ahead and take this off. It's kind of nice to see though. That's what the case brace would probably do for your scooter. Make it look like a Mad Max metal machine. Whoa. Oh, I don't want to scrape my benching. Uh, a little tricky now, I got manure it. <laughs> I always got some interlock issue. Uh, How did I even get on here in the first place, right? Alright. Uh, I think I might maybe have to lift up, really. There we go. Lift up, clear. Uh, sort of. Lift up, clear, tilt it, go tower. Alright, I did that just for show and tell. Alright, here we go. We're going to put these out, out, I guess, on the side here for a second. Before we get started on the other things that are more pressing. All right, so here we go. We're gonna go ahead and it's gonna it's looking it's looking fabulous already. But uh, we're gonna unbolt this. We're gonna change out the clutch springs first things first. So we're gonna need a 17 millimeter impact socket. Um, you could use a regular one, but over time it's probably gonna wear it out. So I prefer just to keep it with a 17 millimeter. Whew, it's so cold. You're touching the socket almost kind of gives you freezer burn everything is just really cold today oh. I know APM is probably laughing at me right now <laughs> cold because <laughs> he lives all the way in Pennsylvania and that's where it's <laughs> dragula cold okay here we go so we're gonna back it out one two three lefty loosey there we go and this actually had blue Loctite, I think. Oh, we broke it already, remember? We didn't put blue Loctite the second time attempt. Okay, so let's see if our washer will look nice on it. This is our original silver washer that was on there. I believe this was on there. I think it's new. We just actually put it on there because it looks fairly still maintained condition. So let's put the black one on there. We'll keep the, um, the smooth side on. There we go. So doesn't that look pretty cool? I think it does. Yeah. Makes no difference right now anyway because it's covered up, but you can see from the side there. This one we might keep it silver. I don't know. Maybe it blends in with the gold more than it was a piece of black one, right? But we'll see. Let's go ahead and keep on keeping on. All right. Kind of like that little Taiwanese writing there. Uh, Benjing. Okay, so we'll just know that. Okay, let's do one at a time. Um, I believe we can't probably take the belt off unless we, yeah, unless we swing it off of the variator. So the variator has to come off at the same time with it. So let's get that off. Okay, let me go and do that. There we go, that came off pretty damn easy. Look at that, beautiful. See, and I, I, that's why I put the smooth side on, if you can see. It puts less, I guess, around mark diameter. So I'll put the smooth side, the washer, against it, and I'll put the flat side against our bolt, which makes them, you know, serrated flange marks here, you can see here. This would have been the same mark on here previously before we had. So that's why, that's why I did it that way. And, you know, it doesn't really matter. You don't want this thing to really grip on this, really. You just want to be able to hold more of the surface diameter to protect it from falling off. So the idea of this, this is not, the watch is not supposed to grip onto your drive face and move with the bolt or anything. You know, the bolt will not move anyway because it's threaded on there and it has these teeth anyway, but you just want to apply the pressure so this thing doesn't pop out, that's all. But it doesn't matter if it ever, ever needs to, for whatever reason, it slides like this. 
but it should hold it in place with the teeth. That's that's the job of the teeth. The washer was just there to keep it more diameter surface. Um, even though this had a built-in flange anyway, we didn't have to worry too much, even if we didn't use a washer. But that's just to help protect the skin of this a little bit. So that's my logic of reasons. And I think it's a valid one. So let me go ahead and continue on. So what we're going to do here is going to take the belt off. Awesome. There we go. So the belt is off now. You will do uh, definitely need the belt off because we need to get the clutch and everything uh, fully assembled. So here we go. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get the, the clutch bell here. Oh, right. Be careful when you're working on this thing because this has a huge uh, compression spring. And that's what's going to, you know, I see a lot of people put it up to their face. I wouldn't want to do that. And this thing looked here. I thought it was a crack, right? <laughs> but it's actually a marker. Here, I'll show you. Now, I don't mind doing it to the camera phone because you guys are not going to get hurt. You're behind, this, you're behind the camera in the comfortable of your handheld device. But yeah, that's just a marker. I'm not sure why there's a marker indicator there. So you can see here. You want to actually bolt it down so you can, so you can actually still feel thread. See, so I see thread coming out. A lot of people do it. We're actually going to flip it the other way. It looks like this bevel edge here is causing it not to actually go in. So we learned something there too. We're going to use a flat side against this guy. Uh, more than likely because you can see here he's curving upward. We could have got a little bit more thread. I believe it was facing the other way. So we'll find out that is true or it just might be even. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to change out these red compression springs here which you can barely see. Let's see if I can even see there. Those little red compression springs just kind of tucked in a little bit. There you go. I'm turning. There you go. You can see it now in the bottom. There's three of them. So we're going to get those guys out of there. And how we get them out of there, we're going to use our feet. And you want to stay almost clear away if you can, but you can't because you need your feet with you, right? Or your feet stays with you. Uh, let's see here. So we're going to use our feet. We're going to get these guys here in the position. Okay, we're going to take a big, huge one and a half inch socket. These are probably 39 millimeters, so if you have to go a little bigger, if you have the NCY one, they might actually even be bigger. I don't even think the NCY one actually fits this one. Let's see if I have the NCY to show you. The NCY one is going to be a little bigger. I think it's a full 40 inch but if I do have one I can show you if it actually fits the socket. I have one but it's probably inside so um yeah the NCY will probably take a little bigger socket. However you can always sand things down, you know what I mean? If you really want it be on there to the same using your same tool socket, you can just sand them down. But you know probably better just to get the right tool socket that way you have a little bigger uh, bolt space. So but they're typically about 39 millimeters. So they're pretty big still. Okay, so here we go. I'm using my open toe sandal still. It's not really his open toe or whatever. You just want to make sure you hold this guy firmly down. 